Hiya! Oh, oh, that was a bad idea. Uh, hello everyone. My name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Hiya! Uh, and today, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Jump into yourself using M Tracker 3D. And Final Cut Pro 10. We're also gonna use a little M Puppet. M Puppet is fun. Yeah! I had to practice my karate kicks for this video. All right, here we go. Oh man, uh, that was take six. Okay, so here we are in Final Cut Pro 10, and you can see I have the clip that we need to track loaded here in our timeline. Uh, we're gonna be using a couple different plugins from Motion VFX today. First, we're gonna be using the M Puppet plugin, and then we are also gonna be using M Tracker 3D. You are able to achieve this effect without the M Puppet, but I definitely think M Puppet brings it to life and makes it a bit more fun. So really quickly, we used a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera shooting in 24 frames per second in 4K ProRes. We shot this at a 90 degree shutter angle. We did this so that there wouldn't be a ton of motion blur and we'd really be able to get out some still images. We also shot this at around f14 so that a lot would be in focus and that really helps us sell this effect. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to select frames that are going to be used for our still images. So you can see here I've got my playhead over my clip and this is where I want my first still image to be. I'm going to use command shortcut option f and I'm going to create a freeze frame and this will be image number one that we will use to mask out that part of the image. So we're gonna go ahead and skip a little bit forward and we're gonna do the same thing on my next spot, option F to create that freeze frame. And we will continue to do this until we get all of the spots that we want cut at the exact frame using command shortcut option F. Next, we are going to drag those images down below our primary timeline so that they stay in place and they are connected in the exact spot of the frame. You'll see why we're doing this later. Next, I want my timeline clip to be a single clip again, so I'm going to press T and just go ahead and drag over until I get rid of all of those blade cuts and we're left again with a single clip. and we will press A to go back to our selection tool. Now we need to make sure that all of our still images, our freeze frames, are the same duration as our primary clip. So using A, we're just gonna go ahead and drag those out and make sure that they match the duration of our primary clip. Okay, so we don't need to track our clip quite yet as we're still prepping all of our images. So let's press a V and that's going to disable that clip. We're gonna go into our first image and we're going to go over into our masks. We want to pick draw mask. What we're doing is we're going to cut out the part of the image that has me doing my super awesome karate kick in mid air. By the way, yes, that did hurt but anything for the video. So here we are in our draw masks. Let's go into our canvas and you'll see our Bezier. Let's scoot this up a bit so we can really see what we're doing. And we are just going to start selecting all around and we're going to begin cutting out the image so that we have just uh, essentially a PNG, something with a transparent background that we can use in M Puppet. I am going to speed through this as well as all of the other images and we will see you in just a second. OK, 
Okay, now that we have cut this image out, we're going to feather it off just a bit, mess with our fall off a bit as well, just so we can soften those edges. We don't want them to be too sharp and too harsh. Press shortcut V again to re-enable your primary clip. And let's go ahead and drag that image up above so that we can see now that we have that transparent background image cut out and we're going to be able to match perfectly with our playhead on that frame. And for speed and the purposes of this video, I have went ahead and made those cuts with our draw mask to all of the other frames as we spoke about. And I went ahead and placed them above my primary clip in my timeline so that everything is ready to go. Y'all also notice that I have renamed each of these clips numerically just to make things a little bit easier to stay organized. So we have our generators open and we're going to go ahead and pick M Puppet up and we're going to place that generator right below our first image that we're going to want to use. Let's go ahead and make sure that that is all the way starting at the beginning of our timeline and we are going to drag to make sure our duration matches. When using M Puppet, you're going to be using a drop zone. So you can see here in our inspector that we have a drop zone option. So select your drop zone and we are going to our first image that we cut out. Start at the beginning of the playhead and place that image in the drop zone and click apply clip. I want to go ahead and set my playhead at the exact moment that I know we're going to cut out that clip to make it essentially disappear as if I've jumped in. So we're going to put our playhead at that exact frame and click to set it in place. Then we're going to want to add handles to our image. So let's go ahead and click right here and let's click on my knee. You'll basically want to click any sort of joints, click on our other knee here at my neck and my elbow, and I believe that'll be enough for what we're going to do. In our inspector, we want to open our handles and we're going to set keyframes for each of these. We want to make sure that these keyframes are set perfectly on the frame that we're jumping into, and then we're going to move backwards to the beginning of our timeline make some adjustments but essentially the idea here is we have me or whatever image you're using is going to land in the position that it needs to be in when you're at that important frame. So since we have those keyframes set on that most important frame we can just play around here at the beginning of our playhead and it's going to be animated in a very smooth keyframed way to look almost like I'm in slow motion there in 3D space once we've applied M Tracker 3D. Okay, and now that we have those set, let's go ahead into our timeline and scrub through and see what that animation is starting to look like. The workflow is exactly the same for each image, so we're going to go ahead and cut and we will be right back once I've made all of those changes. Okay, so you can now see that I have made those adjustments and added very subtle slow motion animation to each of those frames. And this is what it looks like when you place it over your primary timeline. Of course, now is where M Tracker 3D is going to be the savior to make this look awesome. Let's go ahead and disable each of our M Puppet clips and now we need to track our primary footage. So highlight your clip, go over to your effects and drag M Tracker 3D onto your clip. You'll be presented with one button on the screen that simply says track. You also have that same button over in your inspector they both do the same thing, it is simply one click to track your footage. Okay, and now that we are done tracking, you can see on the screen that we have a notification, copy tracking data, paste it to the M Tracker 3D elements placed above this clip. 
So before we copy our tracking data, why don't we go ahead and select the element that we are going to be using, which will be our drop zone basic located over in your titles in mTracker 3D. So let's place that title right above our primary clip and we're going of course to drag that out to match the duration of our tracked clip. So remember we need to paste our tracked data into this title. So let's go ahead and highlight our clip and you'll see here we have copy track over in the inspector. Click that button to copy that tracked information. Now that we have copied our track, go and highlight your title and simply go to paste track in the inspector. To let you know that your paste is complete, you will get a notification saying done, tracking data saved successfully. Go ahead and click OK. So now let's scrub ahead in our timeline and let's find that first frame that we know we have cut out and placed mpuppet in about right there. To check this, let's re-enable by using command shortcut V and let's make sure that we're dead on the money and of course yes we are because we placed the playhead in the spot that we need to be. Since we have our playhead in our position, let's highlight our title and go to your target icon. This is how you select the position in Z space with mTracker 3D. Now, of course, we could place this on me so that we feel like we get an accurate spot, but we're actually gonna use the ground here because we know that we can later adjust our Y position in our drop zone, and we're gonna be a lot closer in Z space using the ground. Go ahead and select the target icon again to turn that position tool off. Now normally you would go to your drop zone well and you would select at the beginning of your generator. However, for mPuppet to work in our drop zone in our title, it's actually going to need to be a compound clip. Before we do that, I can go ahead and show you that the scale of the drop zone is defaulted to 25%. So you can see that I'm really small here. We're going to want to actually bring that up. Of course, you can see our track is perfect. It looks really great. But we need to rescale and reposition me so that I will match our frame. I'm going to speed through this process. It's pretty simple just using our content scale and position here. So I will be right back. Like I said, this process is very simple. Of course, we're just going to go and adjust our scale and drop zone position to match that up. And you can see that we have it matched, but our M puppet, like I mentioned earlier, is not animated. That is because this clip needs to be a compound clip. Press V to re-enable your clip, and then we will have it highlighted and use command shortcut option G to make a compound clip. And you can see now as we scrub through, we have our animation. So go ahead and highlight your title again. Go into your drop zone. Go to the front of the playhead on your compound clip. Select it and hit apply. And then again, using V, we need to disable our top compound clip. And we should have that animation now in that title. You can see now our tracked title is moving with our animation. So our next step is to cut the title at the exact position so it appears as though I have jumped into myself. Let's highlight our title and again we need a compound clip. Do not shorten the duration because it will actually speed up the tracking. So let's use option G again on our title to make a compound clip here. Press B for our blade tool, make a blade cut on our frame, then let's go back to A and we will highlight our clip, press V to disable and then you can see here that that title is now disabled. Let's go ahead and play through. We have our animation, we jump right into our frame and then it disappears and I've jumped into myself. This process is exactly the same for all of the rest of our clips. 
Remember, we are using drop zones in our titles that need to be compound clips to hold our animation in the mPuppet generator. And then we need to make sure that our title is also a compound clip when we make that blade cut. So of course, our next step is to repeat the process by going into our titles, drop zone basic, bring that in right above our other title here, drag that duration out to match, and repeat our process. Since we've established that M Puppet does need to be a compound clip, let's just go to our second M Puppet, press V to re enable, option G to make a compound clip. And again, we repeat the process. Go back to our title. You can see our animation is working great here. Uh, we will go back to our title. We will paste our tracked information. We will set our point on the ground. And then we will apply our drop zone, change our content scale and position to match our next frame, and so on and so forth. Once you sort of understand the concept here, the process is pretty painless. It does take time. You really want to make sure that your content's position and scale is all perfectly matched. But again, this is a process. You will get it. And once you start going, it doesn't take too terribly long. All in all, I would say to create this video, it took me right around an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, and I was done and ready to show you all the final effect. So thank you for watching. This is George Edmondson again with motionvfx.com. For the final little bit, we will go ahead and make one final compound clip on everything. I will apply M film look to make it all look nice and pretty and cohesive for our final clip. Okay, see you on the next one. Oh, yeah! Oh, oh, that was a bad idea. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Yeah! And today, I'm going to show you how to do this. Jump into yourself using M Tracker 3D. Ugh. In Final Cut Pro 10, we're also gonna use a little M Puppet. M Puppet is fun. Yeah! I had to practice my karate kicks for this video. All right, here we go. Oh man. Uh, that was take six.